Back at it with lesson seven. We're on part two now. In part two, we're going to do two proofs. Okay, we're going to prove that the right angle's congruence theorem works. And then we're also going to prove that the vertical angle theorem works. Okay, so I'm going to prove those two theorems and prove that they work for you. And then uh, that'll be it for lesson seven. Keep in mind that we're going to talk more about the congruent supplements theorem and congruent complements theorem in class. All right, so just add these into your notes and let's, uh, let's get moving. All right. So, right angles congruence theorem proof. Do you remember what the right angles congruence theorem said? You might have to look back at your notes, but it said if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent to each other. Or you may have written down all right angles are congruent to each other, something like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to prove that if I know I have two right angles, then they have to be congruent to each other. Okay, so if this is true, then this has to be true. So. Remember our two column proof concepts, so we're going to start with statements and our reasons. In statement one, we're going to start with our givens, so angle A is a right angle, and that's a given. In statement two, angle B is a right angle, and again, that's a given. All right, now we get to prove that angle A is congruent to angle B. All right, so what do we know about right angles? What do you guys remember about right angles? You guys remember the definition of a right angle? Right angle is an angle that equals 90 degrees. So we're going to use that. We're going to write that down. So the measure of angle A, remember to put the M for measure when we start talking about equals 90 degrees. And what would be our reason? Well, because that's what a right angle means, right? That's when we use definition of a right angle. Okay, let me get that in the camera there. Definition of a right angle. All right. So, now, what can we do with this? Angle B is a right angle. Well, we can do the same basic thing, right? The measure of angle B has to equal how much? 90 degrees. Once again, definition, and sometimes we can abbreviate like that if we want, a right angle. Okay? As long as it's very obvious what you mean here. Definition is fine. Okay, step five. All right, now, we're not worried about these two anymore. I want you to look at these two. Notice these are the same. When things are the same, we can skip them. Okay, so I can go from A to 90 to 90, to skip the 90, and get to B. You guys remember what that's called when we skip something? So we go from A to 90, 90 to B, skip the 90. So the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B. What's that called when we skip something? You guys remember? Hopefully you remember transitive property. Transitive. I noticed when I abbreviated this T R A N S. All right, um, some of you are putting transition or something like that. No, it's transitive property of what? Well, we, this can be either equals or congruent. It works for either one. So we come back here, and that obviously tells me it's equals. We're almost done. Remember, we were supposed to prove that angle A is congruent to angle B. Right now, I have the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B. But I want congruent. So all I got to do is change equal to congruent. We just talked about this in lesson six. How do we change from equals to congruence or from congruent to equal? Remember, the order doesn't matter. We can go from here to here or from here to here. You guys remember what it is? If you remember, go ahead and write that reason down. Don't wait on me to tell you. What is that reason? Why can we switch from equal to congruent or from congruent to equal? If you remember it correctly, it's the definition of congruence. There we go. Now, what did we just do? We just proved that the right angle congruence theorem works. Okay, so that means from now on, we don't have to go through all these steps anymore. Here, here's the key concept. Theorems are just shortcuts. That's all they are. So, without this theorem, if I knew that angle A and angle B were right angles, and I wanted to say that they were congruent, I would have to go through all six of these steps. Now, once we have the theorem, if I know step one and two is true, I can skip all the way down to step six. And then my reason is the right angle's congruence theorem. 
Okay, once we've proven the theorem is true, we can use it whenever we want later on. Okay, so we proved it was true, and now we can use it later on. All right, you can't use it until you prove it works, though. All right, remember, if you've got questions, jot them down. You can ask me later, or you can ask me in class. Okay, we're going to do one more proof. We're going to prove the vertical angles theorem. Okay, go ahead and copy that picture down. All right, we're going to prove that angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent. Okay, get that picture copied down. Get your two-column proof thing ready to go, thing that looks like a big kind of T or a cross or whatever, so get that ready to go. All right. Okay, here we go. Vertical angle theorem. Let's prove that it works. All right. So, for this one, though, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add in one more angle. I'm going to call it angle three. Okay, I'm going to put it, you can put it up the top or the bottom, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to put it up the top. All right. So, angle three. Now, statements, reasons. Now, there's not really a given here. There kind of is. The given comes from the picture, right? But it's not like a written out given, all right? But there is a given. There's actually a couple givens. Angle one and angle three. I shouldn't say they're really givens. Um, I'm going to backtrack on that. There, there are first statements, okay? But and we can see them from the picture. But angle one and angle three. Now, look up the picture. What do you guys remember about angle one and angle three? What are they? Okay, you guys remember? Angle one and angle three are a, what's the proper term? Linear pair. Okay, you guys remember that? Now, how do we know they're a linear pair? Well, I look at the picture. I see that they have the same vertex. There's some opposite rays. They're adjacent. They share this ray. All right, so that is the definition of a linear pair. Okay, definition gives us all the stuff we need to know. Okay, same vertex, share one ray, don't overlap, form a set of opposite rays. All right, now, same thing with two and three, right? Two and three are a what? Angle two and angle three are a linear pair. Okay. And this reason, hopefully, is pretty easy. It's the same thing, definition of a linear pair. I'm going to try to squeeze this into one line here. Okay, definition of a linear pair. All right, now, we really don't need the picture anymore. Okay, we're going to go off of everything we have here. So let's think what we know about linear pairs. Got to think back to the first video. So let me grab that. What do we know about linear pairs? Guys, remember, linear pairs are what? See it right there? Yep, linear pairs are supplementary. Linear pairs are supplementary. So, what do we know about angle one and angle three? They are supplementary. Angle one and angle three are supplementary. Why? I'm not going to show you that paper again, but you should have it in your notes. Linear pair postulate. Okay, that's the thing that told us linear pairs are supplementary. Well, we can do the same thing for angle 2 and angle 3. Linear pair postulate. Now, if we had a really good understanding of the congruent supplements theorem, we could use it right now. Most of you probably don't have a real good understanding of the congruent supplements theorem right now, so I'm going to walk through a few more extra steps that we would not need if we were really comfortable with the congruent supplements theorem. Remember, Theorems are shortcuts. Okay, so if I knew the congruent supplements theorem really well, that would be my shortcut I'd use right now instead of having to do the next, you think maybe we got one, two, three, uh, we got about four or five more steps actually because we don't know our shortcut. We don't know our theorem really well. Okay, so what do we know about supplementary? What does that mean to be supplementary? Well, it means that their measures, so we've got to put the M in here, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 equals how much? Supplementary means they add to equal 180. Okay, so how do we know that? Well, Mr. Oates, because that's what supplementary means. Exactly. If that, it's a meaning, another word for a meaning is a definition. So definition of supplementary. Okay. Same thing for angle two and three, right? So you can kind of see we're, we're going almost in pairs. So you wrote this, and then we wrote this. So one kind of goes with three. Three kind of goes with five. Two with four. Four with six. OK, 
Okay, so measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 180 degrees. Once again, why? Definition of supplementary. Now, if you guys don't know what those means, it means the thing right above it, kind of like a repeat mark. Okay, so definition of supplementary. It's a little bit of a shortcut we can use every now and then. If you aren't sure how to use it, just write it out, okay? All right, step seven, we're getting close. We just did one like this on the right angle congruence theorem. This equals 180, 180 equals that. Skip the thing in the middle. So the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three equals 180. 180 equals this, skip the 180. So equals the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three. What's that called when we skip the thing in the middle? Just remember, you better know this one. It's gonna show up on your quiz coming up in a, just a couple days. Transitive property of, you gotta decide which one it is. Transitive property of what? Well, since everything here is dealing with equal signs, it's of equality. Almost done. What do you notice on both sides here? We see an angle three here and we see an angle three here, right? Can I cancel that out? I'm gonna subtract angle three from both sides. Well, what happens? That cancels, that cancels. So now what do I have? I have the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two. What did we just do? That's a, that's a kind of algebra step, right? We subtracted the same thing from both sides. You guys remember what we'd put? subtraction property of equality. Remember, don't abbreviate subtraction as SUB because I might think you meant substitution, okay? So we gotta get the whole word or at least out to the R. Almost done, let's go back, way back. What were we trying to prove? Angle one's congruent to angle two. Am I there? Not quite, I got equals, I need congruent. So all I'm gonna do now is switch this over to congruent. Angle one is congruent to angle two. Why? What tells us we can switch from equal to congruent? You guys remember? You better know this one. Definition of what? Equal to congruent, congruent to equal, doesn't matter. We always say definition of congruence. There we go. We just proved that the vertical angles theorem works. So what happens now? Remember, theorems are just shortcuts. So right now, if I look at this picture, I know by the definition of vertical angles, they share a vertex and they form two sets of opposite rays. One's kind of going that way. The other one's kind of going that way. I know that angle one and angle two are congruent. So I can go straight from this picture to this and put vertical angle theorem. One step. One instead of nine. That's a huge savings in time and ink and paper and thought process and everything. That's why you need to memorize your theorems. I can go from one step, and instead of nine steps, I just use that one step. If you don't memorize it, you literally have to do all nine steps, and they're not very easy. So it's a whole lot easier if you just memorize the proof, or sorry, memorize the theorem, so you don't have to redo the proof all the time. Okay, just memorize the theorem. All right, that's it, that's part two. We'll see you guys in class.